What I want to tell you is something about quantum mechanics, and very simple quantum mechanics actually. So let me start with the following remark that from some maybe a little bit narrow but significant point of view, uh, physics is an art of uh, explaining correlations. Explaining correlations between different uh, uh, different objects, the properties of different objects, and uh, properties of different parts of the universe, and so on. So, uh, in classical physics, uh, what, what does it mean correlation? I would not specify at the moment, but generally everybody understands what does it mean. Uh, it means that we have, we want to learn something about one subsystem from the measurements performed on the other one, on some other one. So in classical case, such correlations appear only in two situations. First, if these two subsystems have a common origin. Okay? So, and then, because we know that there are some conservation laws, so uh, definitely some information of, uh, say, subsystem B is carried by subsystem A. For example, if at the beginning the total angular momentum and total angular spin was zero, so then it should be uh, divided by the two uh, subsystems after they split apart. And uh, so measuring spin of one particle, we can learn something about spin of the second one. There is another possibility of uh, influencing or changing the state of the, of the say, subsystem B by subsystem A is uh, by sending some uh, information, some, or interacting. Obviously, it should be done with the, uh, at most, with the speed of light. So, we will not be very astonished if we find something that something has changed and that something was correlated with the properties of A if it was possible to connect the two instants of time. So this instant when we measured subsystem B uh, and measured subsystem A, if these two points in, in uh, space-time uh, we were able to connect with some uh, subliminal generally uh, interaction. Okay. Okay, so in very general setting, we can say the following. So, if we do not consider two subsystems, but more of them, say N, we have the following situation. That uh, at some stage in their common history, they interacted and uh, all possible exchange of all possible information between subsystems uh, was possible. And then after time t, the t is uh, some time when this uh, interaction ceased to exist, and then they simply split apart and travel their own histories in the space. And then we want to perform uh, several, on, on each of this of the subsystem we perform some particular measurements. Okay? So I will denote this measurement symbolically by x1 to xn. These are measurements of some uh, physical quantities like positions, momenta, spins, etc. etc. And uh, uh, the possible outcome of the experiment x1, this is a this is a1. A1 Let's, for simplicity, assume that at least these A1s are discrete uh, outcomes, okay? So you can, for example, measure a uh, mm, projection of, of, uh, the spin, of spin on, on some particular axis, okay? So then I would, in quantum mechanics, I would, I would think about this X1 as some kind of projection operator. And A1 are the possible outcomes of this measurement. You know that if this is spin one half, 
the possible outcomes are plus or minus or plus one half or minus one half encoding and, and choice of, of uh, units is completely arbitrary what is important for this setting might be not important but simplifying is that everything is discrete although this x1 and x2 I can think about some uh, depending on some continuous parameter for example I'm allowed to to align my 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 equipment my my apparatus which measures the spin some stern gerlach uh, uh, arrangement in arbitrary uh, direction in space okay so what what is what i can i still will be thinking a little bit in this uh, setting of quantum mechanics so but uh, my aim is to show you that it is some general scheme, but uh, the idea is that also in classical physics I can always say, okay, so I can measure something like that, so let's say that I fixed the measurements, so I, for example, fixed my arrangements or my alignments of the stern gerlach apparata, and then I read off the outcomes in each of these subsystems. I remind you again so that they are not interacting so so everything is in, uh, 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 in a sense from the classical point of view everything is settled down already there is no information exchange between subsystems so I can measure the following conditional properties okay? well, pro probabilities so that I obtain a1, a2 and an provided that I measured x1 to xn okay so what are the uh, aha, okay so let's let's uh, for a moment I will return to this to this multi-particle setting in a moment but uh, let's consider something which was with, with uh, what you are probably very familiar so this uh, kind of uh, so-called Einstein Podolsky Rosen setting where you really consider the situation uh, which I described before that there, are, there is a two particle system or maybe it is a one particle which then decays into or one atom which sends photons or whatever into uh, uh, directions in, in space and then, uh, then after a long time it, okay, if these are really photons so we do not need to, to do anything and then we measure, for example, polarization of this photon, okay? Or if this is a particle with a, a total zero spin, then it splits, for example, in two particles with uh, uh, opposite uh, spins, with, say, one half spins or something like that, okay? And then I measure the particular uh, polarization or particular uh, projection of the spin of particular axis. So this my, these are my uh, x1 and x2 which I can choose at will uh, um, this is the position of my apparatus and then say I, I perform this, these two measurements here and here say simultaneously but this is not so important but what, what is more important that it is definitely after the time when they, uh, for the last time, communicate. And let's say that as, as in the setting I presented, so polarizations and so on, or spins, there are really two possible outcomes, which I encode here as a as uh, plus minus one. Okay, so now let's come to the topic, the causality. What are the, I would say, plausible requirements of causality in this situation. From the setting I tried to explain, uh, it, it should be clear that the result of the measurements in one laboratory, I will use this uh, terminology of laboratory, so I am from the community of quantum information theory, so we uh, you, we look at this that you know you have one laboratory, second laboratory and you send information between the two. So one laboratory is this one in which uh, uh, you make the measurement of one of the spin, the, the second one, the second spin. Okay? 
So what are these plausible requirements, I would say, which, which, uh, f uh, which stem from, from, from causality, some causality principle, some, this, this, this is the causality principle which I will use here, is that the outcome of the, of the um, measurement performed in one of the laboratories uh, Provide, uh, it does not depend actually on the results which were which were obtained in the second one. Does not depend because it cannot be changed by this. Okay. Uh, the, and the choice of the measurement, what I what I decide to measure in the second laboratory, does not influence the the measurement of arbitrary the, the, the outcome of the arbitrary measurement in 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 the in my laboratory. Okay. So, uh, so then, by simple calculations using the definition of of, condi of conditional probability, probability, uh, you, you you check very easily that this uh, fundamental quantity which I introduced, so this conditional probability that the outcome of the measurement x1 was a1 and x2 was a2, is simply a product of uh, independent probabilities which are determined only by the settings uh, of the measure, measuring apparata in both laboratories and probably, most, not, not probably, but usually also on the actual state of my subsystem, states of my subsystems, which, because this is what determines the um, outcomes A1 and A2. So conclusion, from these assumptions I would say that there is no possible to there is no possibility to transfer trans, transfer information from the one system to the other. Uh, in this sense we infer uh, the principle of locality of of uh, which which is uh, valid for all classical theories. So, and uh, summarizing that this uh, probability, this condition and probability of obtaining this result is the product of local probabilities. Uh, that the probability of an outcome in each laboratory depends, uh, uh, depends sorry, only on the local arrangement. So, uh, this is something which should be clear. And uh, what one can prove that for this system there exists something which in quantum mechanics we will call hidden variable model. It means that we can say that, that these probabilities actually are effects of the fact that there is some underlying microscopic structure, there is some probability distribution over this microscopical uh, um, variables which we do not control or which we do not have access to and what we have actually is access to some average uh, data. So this is like classical statistical mechanics, okay? So I have access to, to, to measurements of temperature and, and uh, um, pressure in this, uh, in this room. I know that it is uh, that the actual values of temperature and pressure are determined by the microstate of the of the particles of uh, uh, gases which which uh, constitute the atmosphere in this in, in this room, and and these are my variables. Okay, so this and then I can also say about the fluctuations of them and so on, so on. So there are some probabilities, but there is an underlying microscopical structure which determines this. So, in, 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 and, and in, as, as you probably know, in the early stages of, of quantum mechanics, there, were always hope, there was always hope that such a situation is also in quantum mechanics, so that we have these hidden variables, we have no access and control on them, but then the particular uh, quantum mechanical outcomes are determined by these uh, microscopical variables. 
So this is this is such a model looks like that that we have that this probability condition probability is some probability distribution of some deterministic function. This deterministic function is this function which says that if the uh, uh, configuration of uh, atomic of atoms or, or particles in this room is such and such, and the, 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 the temperature and the, and and pressure are such and such. Okay. Okay, so what was, uh, what was, as probably also you know, what was particularly interesting that from this causality requirements, one can derive some quantitative, quantitative, quant quantitative uh, predictions concerning correlations. And these are these uh, famous Bell inequalities, which must be fulfilled by all local or classical theories. So this is the simplest and probably I would say the handbook now example of how to how to derive kind of this or particular instance of of such equality such inequality. So you consider a, a sum of probabilities. I, for, I, I made a shorthand notation here that this uh, plus is one and minus minus one. These are these outcomes, just to, 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 to have the formula shorter. And you have this particular. This should be plus here. I'm sorry. This is important. Here should no. This is okay. Sorry. This is okay. Uh, so this is more or less. If you if you look a little bit careful, this is nothing more than average value of the product of the two outcomes. Because if they are, have the same sign, the, the, the probabilities uh, uh, go with, uh, with the plus sign, and if they are opposite signs, they go with minus. Uh, so this is the, if you, if you, make, if you make the measurement, if you make measurements, so this is probability of, of the number of equal outcomes minus, uh, minus the output of opposite outcomes, if you measure into 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 uh, in, in these two laboratories, I, it, it, it does not mean that I measure the same quantity. X1 and X2 could be different. For example, projections of speed, and this is important. And now I I, I recalculate the uh, particular combination of them, which means that it goes. So I I arrange my my uh, my Stern Gerlach. Uh, uh, measuring devices in different directions. So there are directions. There are three of them: x1, x2, uh, four of them: x1, x2, x2 prime, and x1 prime. And then I perform a number of this measurement, and I count the uh, count this uh, this uh, probabilities, or count this the, the, uh, calculate this this particular uh, combination of them. And then I make another combination, which is at the first sight, it's strange because I take the three with plus, one with minus, and then I calculate out of that that it is the actually the uh, the average value of this combination of outcomes. It could be written in this form. From this, you can uh, easily infer that because each of this outcome is e either uh, plus one or minus one, so. So one of these two one of these two quantities must be two, and one of this uh, and one must be zero. These two, these which are in parentheses, and because others are equal one to the, uh, in the modulus, so the, the the result is plus minus two. So uh, so average is must be smaller than that. So if you take absolute value, so this must be always smaller than two, and this is a celebrated clauser horn shimoni holt inequality, which is kind of uh, something which we usually call Bell, Bell inequalities, because they were first exhibited by Bell in the uh, early 60s, at the beginning of 60s. Uh, I would say the, uh, as a result of discussion about einstein podolsky rosen setting, and this must be fulfilled by all possible local theories. So. What does it mean? All hidden variable theories are all classical theories. But as you also probably know, in quantum mechanics the situation is not so simple, because if you analyze 
very analogous, or maybe the same even, uh, experiment from the point of view of quantum mechanics. So you have two one-half spin particles, then this uh, correlation, I would say now, uh, correlation is simply the expectation value of product of, of, uh, product of uh, projections of spin on two, uh, uh, into, on two, two axes, x1 and x2, which can be calculated according to the laws of quantum mechanics, and this is minus, and this is a scalar product of these two unit vectors, say, which, which show the, the, the which are. Uh, parallel to the axis of, of projections, okay? So these are just directions of spin measurements and psi is the state of the system. And if you arrange your measurement in this, in this uh, pattern, okay, I remember that we have four possible uh, alignments of my, of my measurement apparatus. So if I do it this way, so the simple calculations shows that uh, and, and what is very important here, and I prepare my initial state of the system as such a state. So this is a linear combination, which is allowed in quantum mechanics, of uh, two particles with spin say up and speed down. Actually, uh, actually around which axis this is done, it is not important because the state, the state I would say, is so is isotropic that it can be written in this form if I choose arbitrarily this axis, but let's stick to the notation I had before. So, and then you calculate this uh, according to simply this rule and calculating scalar product of these unit vectors, you will see that this is 2 square of 2, which is definitely more than 2, so it means that Bell, Bell equalities could be uh, Bre uh, broken by, by in, in quantum mechanics. This is what is important here that we have a state which is uh, not allowed in classical physics. This is linear combination of two states with different uh, arrangements of speeds. So, and this is this is the the point in which. Uh, in which uh, quantum mechanics, I would say, differs from classical mechanics. In, in, uh, quant in classical mechanics, uh, the space of states of a system is, I would say, in quotation mark, but something like Cartesian product of, sp uh, of spaces of states of subsystems. Okay, you can have one particle with this spin and the second particle with this spin, and that's all. In quantum mechanics, which is linear theory, the linearity of quantum mechanics, actually, so I would say this is the most prominent feature that you can uh, make a combination of maybe you make a combination of states. So it means that this is a combination of state that this two, this particular two particles have spins plus and plus, and this particle, these particles have minus and minus. Okay, so which is certainly very hard to. To, to, to imagine in classical mechanics or impossible. So that's why these are non-classical states, in a sense, and only for these states I can break this. So, uh, so what does it mean? It means that this requirements of causality which led us to uh, local theories or to hidden variables theory are too strong in quantum mechanics. They are not fulfilled. Uh, in quantum mechanics. They must be somehow relaxed, okay? Uh, so, uh, this, is, this is the reason why quantum mechanics does not admit hidden variable model, okay? Hidden, hidden, hidden uh, variable in the sense which was, which was uh, explained uh, previously, okay? So that uh, certainly you can complicate the situation more and more and you have you can have more, more, uh, more uh, sophisticated, I would say, um, hidden variables theories. But this, I would say, this this picture of of, uh, of uh, hidden variables which we model on the statistical mechanics will not work. 
So this is why we, we say that quantum mechanics is non-local because you, 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 you saw that this locality and this fact that and the locality and hidden variables uh, theories were uh, hidden variable model were consequences of the same assumptions. Okay, so uh, let's let's think in causality in a little bit more I would say relaxed form, namely also a little bit in, in informal now that uh, first no, no information is transmitted, not useful information. Uh, because it could be shown that despite the fact that this uh, causality uh, requirements are imposed uh, at the beginning, which led me to the uh, to, to, to hidden variables theories or to local theories, are too strong, it does not mean that in quantum mechanics I, I can, for example, really transmit information uh, more effectively, more quickly, with, for example, uh, with superluminal uh, speed. This is not true. So no information, but I would say, I would ex re-express this also a little bit in formal way, that uh, if my setting in my laboratory of my measurements is random, so equally random are, are outcomes. So they are not influenced by what, was hap what, was, what is happening. The, the randomness of them is not restricted by what is happening to other. Okay. So let's summarize this, what, what, I, what I said. So with this very strict causality requirements, which I imposed at the very beginning, the, I, I, this, this, this requirements resulted in this uh, uh, CHSH inequality, which uh, said that my correlation S uh, must be smaller than 2. Then you can also ask a question whether quantum mechanics as we know it, whether it also imposes some, some strict uh, uh, upper bound for this kind of correlation, this particular correlation, then in this two-partite system with uh, dichotomous uh, outcomes. Okay? Yes, it does. This is what it, it does. It's called the Cirelson inequality, which is actually saturated uh, by the previous example, it means that this correlation in quantum mechanics, independently what kind of measurements we choose, provided that this is this this fits to the scheme, okay, that we have two possible outcomes in two partite system. Whatever state we uh, assume at the initial state of my system. It cannot be larger than this 2 square root of 2, which, as I already mentioned, was saturated by the example I showed. Now we can ask the following question. Is there a plausible or admissible causal theory with some reasonable uh, causality requirements which breaks the uh, uh, bounds imposed by Cyrilesson inequality. So it means whether we can improve or maybe change quantum mechanics in such a way that the resulting theory is still causal in some reasonable sense, but that, that there is no restriction imposed by this. I would say that this is not the, the, I would say this attempt is not to have a better theory that's good than quantum mechanics. No, I believe that quantum mechanics is a good theory and gives good predictions. Good, give good predictions, so there is no reason to do this. But uh, looking for such theory can tell us why quantum mechanics is such as it is. Okay, so this is the main, main, okay? This is the main, uh, the main task of this, uh, I would say, uh, um, attempt to, uh, to, to, to finding such theory. If, you, if we come back to, to this, uh, to this uh, definition of S, 
So you see that it consists of four terms, and each of this term is the maximal value of, of each of this term or uh, in the modulus is, 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 is one, minimal is minus one, okay, so this is uh, either one or minus one. So in principle you can, you can maybe arrange this in this way, that this two, that this three e's at the beginning have value one, and the last one have value minus one, which will give four in this case. Okay? You know that it is not possible in quantum mechanics, because in quantum mechanics it's zero sum inequality, which, which, uh, which uh, does not allow to do this. Uh, in classical uh, physics it is not possible because there is Bell inequality which does not allow for this. So whether it is, but nevertheless, whether but this is a, a, I would say, legitimate question whether you can you can try to construct causal theory for which this is larger than uh, two square of two. So nothing more than four can be produced out of that, but maybe uh, the upper bound can be moved to four. And indeed, there is such a possibility under plausible. Uh, causality requirements. So uh, these are so-called popescu rorli boxes. Nobody knows how to realize them in practice. Probably it's not possible because, as I told you, quantum mechanics is a good theory and it gives a good prediction. So definitely uh, the outcomes will be uh, bounded by Cyrilson inequality. But uh, the idea is the following. So still we have the same setting, so we have, now it's very simple because we have two possible measurement arrangements, say, which we encode by plus and minus one in each of these laboratories, and the outcomes <coughs> can be plus or minus one <coughs> in both cases. <coughs> so, excuse me. So, and then, Let's, let's assume that uh, between the arrangements uh, and outcomes there is the following relation. It is very obscure here, but if you, because I insisted to have this plus minus one, if you formulate this in, 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 in we scale this, that this, all these uh, quantities x1, x2, a1, and a2 are simple bits, so this is zero and one, you can rescale it by adding uh, one half and multiplying by two. So then this is much easier, but nevertheless, this is some relation, okay, which, 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 which we impose. So this is, so if the, if the, um, if the arrangement are x1 and x2, x1 and x2 can be plus minus 1, so this is the outcomes might, must fulfill this, this relation, okay? And then you can check that, uh, that if, if this are randomly distributed, say uniformly randomly distributed with plus minus one, so this is the same with A1 and A2. So in a sense, this, this, this causality that if this is random, this is also random, it is not, that is not, I will, I will, I will uh, formulate this a little bit better in the, on the next transparency. So then if you calculate this correlation, it is exactly four. So the question arises, why quantum mechanics and not some other non ah, and such, such theories which, uh, which, for which this, uh, this causality principle that say this is random, so this is random, they are non-signaling theories. It means that there is no actual uh, uh, real information transmitted between subsystems. So, uh, so why, why, why we live in the world which is governed by quantum mechanics, not by some other uh, non-signaling theory, and which causality principles or principle distinguish uniquely quantum mechanics? This is the question which you can pose knowing what I told you. I am uh, approaching the end. So, what is interesting that all these three theories, or three groups of theories, so local theories, quantum mechanics, and this general non-signaling, sometimes uh, called the theory with super quantum correlations can be put in some unified way modeled on I would say ordinary quantum mechanics namely that you have uh, this was uh, done quite recently in 2010 
uh, that uh, uh, this general non-signaling correlations are such that if you calculate the marginal probabilities, marginal conditional probabilities, uh, so you sum over all possible outcomes, say for the A to AK, then the resulting uh, conditional probability does not depend on anything which does not uh, 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 involve this group of, of this is for uh, this n particle setting which I which I showed on the, sec on the second tra uh, transparency the, 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 no two two parties two parties but n parties okay so then 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 if you sum over all possible results in the say k first laboratories so the resulting resulting conditional probability does not depend on anything which is not in this laboratories, the, 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 this, this laboratory, this from k, uh, k plus 1 to, and, and this should be uh, true for all possible arrangements, so for all possible uh, choice of k laboratories and for all possible k's out of this n laboratories, okay? So this is this general uh, causality principle, which is which admits, but, but, what, what happens? It admits this general non-signaling theory does not uh, distinguish quantum mechanics, so we have to think what really distinguishes quantum mechanics. This is a question which I do not answer, which I do not know how to answer. There's, there were several attempts to answer this question. I think no, no, none of them was, for me, was, not, was satisfactory. Okay, so what is interesting that this, uh, the, the, this, this, uh, this, the, there is a model for these probabilities in each of these uh, three settings, which is uh, very, which, is, which unifies this. And as I told you, this is so-called, one can say that this is Hilbert space model of the measurements in all these three cases. So we, we assume, that we, the, the model is the following. We, we have a, Hilbert space of the whole system, which is actually a tensor product of Hilbert spaces for individual subsystems, and we have local measurements. So these are positive definite operators acting on this on this a, uh, on this edge. In quantum mechanics, these are, for example, projections on different on different uh, on different uh, direction, directions of of spins, which fulfill some some. Uh, completeness relation, okay, so that, that, I, that, that I can measure everything. And all this local quantum and non-general signaling correlation can be written in the form, like in, in, in quantum mechanics, that it is the average value, so which is here uh, taking the trace of some operator with this, with this um, measuring uh, measuring uh, operators. So, uh, as in quantum mechanics, this W should encode somehow the state, a state, the state of, of my system, okay? Uh, the state which in uh, quantum mechanics is something which we call density operator. This is the this mixed state of the, of the quantum system in, in, in question. Uh, for local correlation, this is also a density operator, but for non-entangled states. So this is very well, this fits very well to our intuition that the, this non-entangled or separable states are those which correspond exactly to classical physics. And for this non-signaling correlation, this W is uh, is arbitrary Hermitian operator which is positive on pure separable states. So this is, you see that here is the, the, the general principle of quantum mechanics is broken here because uh, density operator must be positive definite operator. This does not need to be positive definite and this is very interesting. The interesting thing is that such operators play also a very distinguished role in quantum mechanics because they are able to to discover the, the entanglement of states. So, so somewhere between these two, should we should look for some on this in this formulation, look for the restrictions on the correlation which which really uh, restrict us to quantum mechanics. Okay, this is my last transparency. But my opinion is that maybe 
this is not a good or maybe not promising idea to try to look only on the causality, on the causality principles to distinguish quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics we have something more, not only this causality principle, but also some dynamics generally. Schrodinger equation or whatever, depends on the formulation. But you have something which to some extent determines what happened and what will happen. Okay? And what is for me especially interesting is that in classical physics in quantum mechanics, both future and past are in a sense ambiguous and, and uncertain, but for completely different reasons. So in classical physics, past in general is, is known, okay? It's set, it's settled down, but it's forgotten, okay? So the, 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 the correlation decay, and you cannot, you cannot uh, uh, really uh, discover the whole uh, uh, past. With the future, future is uncertain because you never know the exact uh, initial condition at the moment that you have dynamical instabilities. In quantum mechanics, you are in the, in the, in the, in the uh, similar situation. Certainly also if, if it's a macroscopic uh, system, even quantum mechanica, but, but, but are large. So the same principles apply in classical mechanics. But there is something intrinsic in, in quantum mechanics which does not uh, allow us to, to make past certain uh, and uh, to, to, to make future predictable. predictable. In, with the future everybody knows that it is so, because quantum mechanics is intrinsically uh, probabilistic. Okay? So we don't know whether this particular atom will decay in the next second or not. But with the past is also, if you, if you look at this from this particular point of view, it is also so. So this is this famous experiment, which way experiment, okay? You have, you have uh, laser light, you put on this uh, splitting uh, uh, plate, okay, which, admi which uh, admits uh, half of the, of, the, of the photons in this direction, half in this direction. And then if you arrange this in this way, these are uh, perfect mirrors. So due to interference effects, if, uh, 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 if, if both paths are allowed, so the net result will be that, uh, that you will measure outcoming photons only in this direction. So uh, you really don't know which way this, this photon traveled, okay? In some sense, this is, this is a question which, which quantum mechanics does not answer, but we do like to know how is that. Quantum mechanics says, I have nothing to say about it. But this is not true, because if you block this one of this way, then you for, for sure you know that, that, that it, it went out this way by, 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 um, by I would say, ironically, you will have then um, in, um, ambiguity in the outcome here. There will be half here, half here. So, f at future, uh, uncertainty is due to intrinsic. I don't know, and this is the question which I would pose, how it should be in general non-signaling theory, whether we can, whether this uh, ambiguity of the past and uncertainty on the future, uh, how it will look in such theories, and this is probably the, the way how we can um, distinguish quantum mechanics from other. Thank you, this is exactly the moment I wanted to.